now with uh, Tom Wilson, the director of policy at the Counter Extremism Group. Uh, Tom, we don't have much information on this event, but when there are situations that kick off in the Middle East, do we generally see an uptick in events like this in the West? Yes, I think that's right. We both see um, an increase in activity and threat at the time of these sorts of Middle Eastern incidents, but also as an ongoing thing that happens between communities. I think that it's one of the troubling developments in our politics that more and more we're seeing foreign conflicts and um, foreign disputes between different ethnic groups actually playing out here in the West and in Britain. Obviously, the Iranian one is particularly pertinent at the moment, and there's a big Iranian dissident scene in, in countries like Britain. But also, if you think about the um, Turkish Kurdish conflict and the way in which that's played out in, in Europe, um, another example might be tensions between Pakistan and India and the way in which we've seen Hindu and, and Muslims tensions play out in, in some of Britain's cities. And I think it's an unfortunate um, development within our politics that we're having to see, as we saw particularly around some of the Gaza protests and uh, people who appear to be supportive of Hamas, uh, trying to bring that conflict and that dispute to Britain and sort of play it out here and adjudicate on the, on the conflict here in our national life and our politics. Tom, we were we were just discussing how um, this could potentially have security implications for us here in the UK, even before um, we had this breaking news. Do you have any insight into what the motivation might be behind this attack? Um, and off the back of that, whether we should be concerned here in the UK? Obviously, we've seen these huge protests each weekend. Um, people will have some concerns. Is this something that we should be particularly worried about here in the UK? Well, I think, as I, as I mentioned, about this issue around Iranian dissidents and those people in the UK who are aligned with the Iranian regime and how that plays out here. It sounds as though potentially the individual in Paris may have been in some way related to, to dissidents who are opposed to uh, the Ayatollah's regime in Iran. And equally, we know that Iran has a reach into the West, that it's been able to strike Israeli and Jewish targets in particular um, in Bulgaria, targeted Israeli tourists, and of course, famously in Argentina, and even here in Britain, there were reports that leading figures in the Jewish community were being monitored by, by Iranian groups and were possibly under threat. So I think there are key people that Iran would seek to target first in Britain, such as those who are opposed to it among the Iranian diaspora community and the Jewish community. Um, and those groups would be more at risk probably than the general British public. Tom, what is the extent of Iranian extremist influence here in the UK? Well, um, I've actually not been looked at as closely as other types of Islamist extremism, such as that related to Islamic State or Al-Qaeda. The, the Shia groups, the pro-Iranian groups that were out in force, things like the Al-Quds Day rally, aren't usually focused on as much, but they are there in the background. They are part of the wider scene, and I certainly think that they do have an influence in stirring up discord. They also um, were present on the recent Gaza marches as well. If you went on those marches, you saw people with pictures of Ayatollah Khomeini um, and people distributing Iranian, uh, pro-Iranian, pro-regime literature. So they're certainly contributing to, to extremism in this country. Now, I should just say we're getting some new lines in. A witness says that the man in question, the suspect, put flags on the floor of the consulate and said he wanted to avenge his brother's death. Meanwhile, radio, uh, French Radio Europe 1 is reporting that the man was holed up in a room within the consulate with the ambassador himself. <laughs> That's extraordinary. It, it seems like it's a very targeted event. Well, it sounds as though if the individual was able to get into the consulate and was even with the ambassador, that they may in some way be known to members of the regime. Obviously, it's very, very difficult to speculate, but somebody wouldn't usually be granted that kind of access unless there was already some involvement going on there. And I think this is an, another example of how an incredibly volatile situation in another country comes to the West and 
and comes to Europe, in this case, Paris. And um, embassies, of course, have been in the Iranian embassies um, a focus of, of this kind of activity in the past. Well, uh, Tom Wilson, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're going to be 